My name is Winston Carney. I'm 38 and I'm from Media, Pennsylvania. My childhood uh, was, was a good one. I mean, I grew up in the suburbs just like a uh, middle class family. And I had my mom, my dad at first at a young age. And everything was good. And then they, they got caught up in the, the drug lifestyle a little bit. And they got in a little trouble. And then I moved in with my grandmother and my grandfather, who were also very, very good people. Had a business. My grandfather had a, a landscaping business. And my grandmother was a nurse, a registered nurse. And they tried to do the right thing and, and raise us the right way. And so they always had us in sports and in school, doing good in school. And for the most part, you know, we lived in media with my, grand, my grandmother and my grandfather. And then as my mom and dad tried to get themselves together, um, you know, we were still with my grandparents. And I, I have a very big family. Like my grandmother had um, seven children. If I'm not mistaken. Eight children, seven children. Yeah, seven children. Four girls and three boys. And um, that's a big family, if you think about it. And we grew up around a lot of my uh, grandfather's brothers and his family. So we were always around our entire family. Like, Everybody was always around. We always had family reunions, big family reunions. And we were real, like a close, close, big family. And my grandfather was like the, the patriarch. You know, he was the oldest of uh, his family, oldest, oldest brother. And so, you know, everybody looked up to him and he, took on that role like like a champion. Like he was, he had everything, you know, under control. Our family, his brother's families, he had, you know, everybody, you know, happy and doing the right things. And if you weren't doing the right things, he would get in your ass about it. So my grandfather was always a, a, a good person, always wanted to be a good person, always wanted us to be good people. And that's why he, he lived where he lived, and you know, he had a, such a big family. And then as you know, I got older and graduated high school, my, uh, my mother who had a house in Ridley, she relapsed and started doing drugs again. And my dad, who just came home from jail, he was getting himself together and he got a good job. He started plumb being a, becoming a plumber and doing the right thing. And he's been doing the right thing ever since. In the last 20 something years, my dad's been on the right path. He's been working as a plumber. He's a master plumber. My brother's the same way. My brother works for Lenda Plumber now. He's doing good. He works like $40 an hour. He's been in and out of jail though as a, at his, you know, in his younger years, but he's learned a lot. And my sister is a registered nurse, so she followed, you know, my grandfather, grandmother's footsteps. And a lot of my uh, mom and uh, aunts are in the healthcare uh, field too. And my one aunt, she works for SEPTA. So I have a lot of family that that does good. Oh, I mean, I was a uh, a pretty, you know, like a good student. I mean, I wasn't like the best student, but I, I wasn't average. I was a little bit above average. I just, I didn't have any guidance. So like in high school, I worked as I you know, went to school and I was paying like rent, just, you know, 
is my stepdad, who was like a Marine, ex-Marine. He was like very like, you know, hard and he, but he drove me to do a lot of good things, but he didn't have me focused on the right things. You know, he tried to like stay out of like trouble and those type of things, but he didn't have me focused on like what, because he, because he never went to college. So how's he going to tell me how to get to college or how to, you know, the steps to, to take to get to college if he never did it himself? So, and plus my guidance counselor in high school, I seen her one time, I think it was like the first time I ever seen her. It was like right before I started going to the school. And then the last time I seen her was like a week before graduation. Where she asked me what I wanted to do and I'm like, I don't know, school's over. So, I felt like I kind of got cheated out of that. But, you know, that's also something you have to take responsibility for. I didn't, I didn't make that step, take that step, and I didn't go to college. But I had every uh, opportunity, and I had the grades. I just didn't take my SATs, and I wasn't pushed to take the SATs, so I didn't take them. I didn't do anything about um, applying to colleges. I think I applied to Mansfield, or I tried to, and I sent out the package or something. I never got anything back. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't go to college. Um, memories I can look back on. Well, in middle school, um, we played pee wee football you know, for Rose Street Colts. You know, I didn't get to really play that much, but, you know, my cousin, Sean, was a star athlete, so being around him and him, he, he being the, the, like, basically, like, the best player on the team, quarterback, running back, linebacker, and then him just being my first cousin, you know, his mother and my mother were sisters, and us being the same age, we was always connected, like brothers. And just being around him and him winning most of the time, you know, going undefeated for like three straight years, winning the championship year after year after year. We went three, we went three straight championships and went to four straight championships. Lost the last one. But, I mean, them years were just, like, amazing. Like, you know, unstoppable at football, and then practicing football and playing, you know, with our schoolmates and teammates was just the best thing ever. Like, we were, you know, we were the happiest kids around because we were undefeated. No one ever could beat us. And at school, we was just, like, always talked about because we were so good and then everybody wanted to be around us because you know we were popular and you know my cousin Sean yeah he was just just being around him and being around uh, everybody else you know our, t our, our teammates schoolmates it just was like really fun I mean drugs have been a part of my life my entire life like I said my, my parents you know, they, they were in the drug life, you know, early in my uh, life. And, you know, they were battling with that, you know, off and on for, you know, most of their lives. Like, my mom, she she took a, a big break and she was in, uh, like, sober time for about 12 to 15 years. Yeah, I'd say from, like, 1990 to, like, 2005, she was sober, and she did real good. She she got a house in Ridley for herself with my stepdad, and they had a nice house. We lived in one of the best houses on Garfield Avenue in Ridley, in Woodland section of Ridley Township. We took the house from like being like one of the. Uh, 
like worst looking houses to having like the second best house on the block. I can say that because the first best house was like this Italian family who like, had all this money. And they definitely had one of the best houses, but we came in a, a you know easy second because the way we, my stepdad like put a lot of money into it and he had me build everything and paint everything. And me and my brother, yeah, we put a lot of work in that house. Until this day, people still, you know, someone else lives there now, but they're living off of everything that we did to that house because we put in uh, central air, put in uh, like a whole walkway, put in a, we fixed the front yard that was like like two little hills and then we like actually packed it in and put like a big you know front cement wall out front and now it's like a flat ground like fix that house up that house went from like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house to a four hundred thousand dollar house like that easily and um yeah like after high school i kind of got into the restaurant business and you know becoming a server and a uh, a waiter kind of had a lot of money you know, to my disposal and I started taking Percocets actually I got I like broke my ankle and doctors prescribed me Percocets and then from there I just started grabbing them off the street and I picked I guess I picked up in a little addiction and from 2005 to about a year or two ago I've been taking you know prescription pills pain pills and now I'm down here smoking dope or whatever you want to call it smoking trank or whatever the fuck this shit is I think, I mean, it's all, I've always known that it was down here. Like, when I was younger, my dad used to drive us down here when he cop dude. So I've always known about Kensington. I remember when we were younger, he used to drive down, you know, late night because he had a good job. He would work construction or something like that. He's always a foreman. He always had a good job. And at late night, we would come down here and pick up one of his friends and, before we dropped him off at Nabisco, he worked for like Nabisco. Like, I always remember like, when we would drop him off, we would smell cookies and smell like, you know, like all the sweets and shit. Like, and before we dropped him off, they would come down here in Kensington and cop and shit. And um, he would always send us to the store. We'd go get like a snack or something, some sodas and shit. And they would get their little shit, get their high on. And when we come back, yeah, we'd be going home. And it was always a long ride home from here to like Chester County, like West Grove. So we would always be listening to like uh, WJJZ 106.1 or some country station or something like that. And I would always remember just looking at the stars, sitting in the back seat and just listening to music and shit. It was kind of like soothing or something. But yeah, we would always come down here I've always known it was down here, so that kind of like was in my head. So how do you end up out here now as far as like, you know, your living situation to being, you know, basically homeless, how did that happen? Um, I guess I chose to be out here because I, like, I was living with my sister and I, I can't bring something like this to her home. Like, I did it, and it was the wrong thing to do. And you know, it just be, it breaks my heart thinking that I, you know what I mean, got high in her house. So I kind of felt like it was something I needed to do. I needed to leave because I can't, you know, do that in her house. And she has, you know so much good going for her 
I could never take that from her. I could never you know, take the good things she's doing with her kids and with her life. I can't do something like that, her, like that to her. And you know, do you have kids? No, I don't have any kids. What I've lost, I mean, I think the only thing I've lost is just the connection with my family that I had. And that's, yeah. What's the relationship tough. like that? I, I mean, I don't talk to, I only talk to my sister and my brother, basically. If I do talk to any other family members, it's like in passing or if I see them randomly. But, I mean, I can always go back and see them. No, I'm not ashamed to go around them. But, do they judge me? Some some do, yeah. They go, they're, they're upset. You know, they, they, they know that we're better than this, and we've always been better than this. Like I told you, we grew we come from a middle class suburban family. Like, we come from a family where, like, like I have a lot of, like, respect. And my grandparents and my parents had some respect, you know, where they're from. And so doing this, you know, isn't really, like, for me and the fact that I'm down here it's just not a, it's not where I'm supposed to be a day in life for me is I wake up and I, I go out and I either find something to sell or I take what I need and sell it down here and get my fix, get whatever I need to get well. No, that and um, I guess they call it meth, ice. I mix both of them and I smoke both of them. What type of feeling does high does that give you? It just gives you like a relaxing, like, um, like uh, it kind of feels like an opiate, opiate high, but really it's, it's some tranquilizer. It, it, it has the properties of, of um, pain pills and stuff, so you kind of have a down feeling, but you like you, you basically chill. You're chill. Yeah. Does it make you fall asleep like how some people Oh, yeah, it, it definitely makes you fall asleep. Now, let's talk about the negative side effects of that drug. Let's yeah. Tell us, tell us about it. it. That shit knocks you out sometimes, like, without you even knowing that you're going out. It knocks you out for a certain amount of time, for a period of time. And every time it, it like knocks you out, like you get robbed, or you get yeah, you just basically get robbed. You can get hurt too. You could. You yeah. Fall on train tracks. Yeah. I mean, uh, people drive cars and have killed themselves and other people because they yeah. actually put them to sleep behind the wheel. Yeah. That's how potent it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things have happened. Like you said, they fell on the train. Like a lot of people have either fell on train tracks this year or jumped on the train tracks or something like that. Kidnapped and too because kidnapped, people, guys yeah. around here driving around, they just wait to see somebody nodding out and they just come and snatch you. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard all them stories, but I'm sure, here, yeah, bro. it's yeah. happened. Yeah, because they've been... How long have you been out here now on this run that you're on? Um, a little over a year. The, the amount of people that were down here when I first came down here has been cut in half. It's definitely been cut in half. Oh, I've had guns pulled on me. Um, niggas threatening to kill me. Uh, definitely been robbed a thousand, over thousands of times. Um, and that is because of my stupidity and staying down in certain areas where I know if I stay there and I fall asleep, I'm going to get robbed. And I do it anyway. My stubbornness. I still have control of myself. I mean, I can stop whenever I want. Have you tried it before? Mm, have I tried to stop? Yeah, you had any clean time in the past? Yeah, I had some clean time. Yeah. How long as you had? I think I went like a month. How did it trigger you? I think, um, I think it was, uh, just being depressed about, you know, 
certain things in my life and being at the age I'm at and not being where I want to be. I just was just, yeah. So depression is, is a trigger for you? Yeah. I feel like if you, you if you start putting positive, you know, like activities, hobbies in your life, like in some type of career, you put those things in your life, you can uh, turn it around. You can you know start to do better and and be sober. You just have to try to you know you know know what those things are before you you know quit. So what's your living status now, Winston? Where do you live? Where do you sleep? Oh, I stay in different places from time to time. So you are homeless? You don't have a, a, a yeah. place to rest every night? No, I don't have a place to rest every night, and that's the same. Right. What do you think about the shelter? I don't go, I've never been to a shelter yet. That's not an option for you? No, I don't want to live in their show. I can live, you know, outside, tent, you know, so my friends have, you know, built certain type of homes, kind of like a, like a home. What about taking showers and clothes oh. and food? How do you get all those things? My man has a, a shower built where, like, and then hydrants, hydrants, fire hydrants. Okay. But my man built a shower, so like you fill up the uh, water jugs and you pour the water jug in, you know. That's a blessing. And it like, yeah, it makes the shower. Mm -hmm. out. Somehow he, he nice with the plumbing. <laughs> right. But yeah, but we able to take a shower. We able to wash. So. And then there's other uh, like services on in Kensington. They, they have a couple um, places where you can shower, actually ha you know, you take a shower. Okay. And then they bring you clothes, they give you clothes all the time. So like, there's no reason for you to be dirty, funky. It's not that, it's not always that they're, they're dirty. And it's just like their mindset is set on, you know, like that drug or something so hard, they're so hard set on that thing that they just, don't even think about you know mental washing. And, yeah, yeah. They have a mental illness. My short-term goals are to get out of here, get back working, get you know my foot back going towards the right direction in life, and get an apartment and start from there. What are your fears? What are you afraid of in life? I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid to you know, not do anything in life, like not do anything and have anything, you know, to leave here in this world. I wanna have, I wanna make a mark and I wanna leave something. Passion, I'm passionate about um, sports. I know that, my Eagles doing the thing. They got Saquon, you got Jalen Hurts, you got Devontae Smith, looking like we about to, you know, take another run at that Super Bowl. Hopefully they uh, can do it. I'm passionate about that, and it, and my family. I'm passionate about my family. Hopefully we can, you know, get it back to what it was. You know, when my grandfather had everything going the right way. I know, we, I know he's looking down. You know, de demanding and depending on us to get it the right way. So I know we're going to do that one day. Get it, get it right back to where it was. I want to send them a message saying, don't worry, I'm on my way back, you know, I ain't, I ain't lost, I ain't, you know, deep in an addiction, I'm, you know, I, I am uh, doing a drug, but I, don't, I am never going to be an addic addicted to any drug, so I'll be back soon. Message I got for the youth, stay in school and do the right thing and just don't do drugs. Don't don't come down this path. It's not a path that you want to come down. It's not a path that you want to leave. You know your family. You know thinking and, and worrying about you. And plus, there's a lot more in life. You know that is positive that you could do. Do positive things in life. Do things that'll make you happy. You know, 
which I should practice what I preach. And, you know, I kind of do some of those things, but I don't do all of them. My message for the world, that's, that for people that struggle with drug addiction. Those who judge them. Those that judge them, listen, you know, you can judge and you, you're partially right because, you know, they are doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. They know better. But just be a, a guiding light. Be someone that, you know, can help them. Always try to push them to, to you know, get better, but don't judge them. Don't beat them down. I mean, you can judge them in a way, but don't beat them down. Don't, you know, be someone that, you know, discourages them, encourage them to do better, always. And be someone that's there for them. You know, don't ever give up on anyone. Because when you give up on someone, that means you, you give up on yourself, too. So yeah, we about to take flight, AML fam. Winston, before we take flight, is there anything that you're in need of that we can help you with, brother? No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine, but if you want, you know, you can just send me positive uh, encouragement. Okay. And maybe, you know, some females send me a couple numbers. Okay, so it's if, like, they, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, if they want to, if people want to write you and reach out to you, do you have an email or a way they can do that? Um, just hit up my page. Tell us your page. My page, my Facebook page, is my name, Winston okay. Carney. Oh, so give him your, so you do check that Facebook? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. And then you can set, uh, hit my uh, Instagram up, at Gooninator. You know, you, what you can do is, uh, you know, come down here and start, you know, putting in some, some uh, time. Putting in some time down here and changing things. Come down here and, and volunteer. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to uh, come down and, and get people to leave. You just got to come down and show them that you care. Don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out. Peace out, AML. Yeah.